Join us now from 30 Rock is the host of Morning Joe and Afternoon Joe and now Evening Joe. That would be Joe Scarborough. Hi, Joe. How you doing? Yeah, you're doing great, John. How you doing, buddy? I I'm doing fantastic, man. Um, tell me uh, whether which, which camp you fall into at this point. If, if the goal is to stop Donald Trump, if that were your goal, would you prefer to see this narrow to a one on one race where it's Trump versus Cruz or to continue to have Trump fighting with a split field? Well, if, if I were in the stop Trump feel, uh, group, I would certainly want, uh, wouldn't want Ted Cruz and Donald Trump one on one because we're going into the Northeast where people like Ted Cruz underperform not only in general elections, but also in Republican primaries. So with New Jersey in front of us, New York, Connecticut, and other northeastern states. I think it's best to have John Kasich in there. Maybe he pulls 15, 20, 25 percent of the vote. Cruz can pull 20, 25, 30 percent of the vote. And you can actually keep Donald Trump's numbers down. Of course, that all, though, depends on tonight and whether John Kasich can carry Ohio or not. Uh, so much rights on that for the stop Trump forces. Joe, let me ask you about another debate that I hear smart Republicans on both sides of, which is, how difficult would it be if Trump has a plurality but not a majority to take the nomination away from him at the convention? I talked to one smart Republican today who said PR impossibility. Others think perfectly reasonable argument to make that they're already making, which is the, under the rules, you need a majority and you got to get a majority however you get it. It depends on, it, I mean, so much of that depends on Donald Trump. Three weeks ago, I would have said they could never do it. That was before he was asked about David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan, and he said he didn't have enough information in front of him to pass judgment on either the man or that organization. He, of course, backtracked soon afterwards, but he sent a message out. Then, of course, you know, talked about how Islam is against, is at war with the United States. Uh, that obviously caused a lot of concerns. Friday night caused a lot of concerns. If we see that Donald Trump, the day trader that's doing whatever he can to prey on people's anger and their frustrations and their resentments, then I suspect anything is possible in Cleveland. And a lot of Republican leaders will say we would rather blow up this party than let Donald Trump be our nominee. But does that make it easier if from he, a PR? Does that make it easier from a PR point of view? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it certainly makes it a lot easier from a PR point of view where you can say, these actions of Donald Trump make him unacceptable, not only to the Republican Party, but disqualify him as president of the United States. Let me give you the alter alternative uh, theory, and that is that Donald Trump actually turns a page. He moves from being this primary candidate that is uh, that's playing to the lowest common denominator on a lot of different issues and becomes the man that a lot of people have known him behind the scene. And that is a moderate, of course, most people that have known him in New York for 10 years will tell you he's a moderate Democrat. But if Donald Trump does what he's privately been telling people he was going to do and start moving towards the middle and start unifying and start reaching out to Republican leaders, then it becomes more difficult for the Republican Party to reject him if he only has a plurality. Today, he reached out to Mitch McConnell. And of course, the majority leader let people know that he lectured Donald Trump on violence in his rallies. Uh, if Donald Trump begins that that campaign to reach out to Republican leadership, which I suspect he'll do, uh, then it's going to be a lot harder for Republicans to take it away from him if he has a plurality. Joe, you, you wrote a column in The Washington Post, and, and although everybody who's smart that I know reads The Washington Post and also follows you relentlessly, there may be some people in our audience who did not read that column, which made a pretty provocative charge about what happened on Friday night at that Trump rally in Chicago. Just, right. just outline the, the, your theory of the case there and whether you think, in the end, what happened Friday night will hurt Trump or help Trump today in terms of the vote going on in these five states. Well, first of all, it was a made-for-TV event. People comparing it to Chicago 1968 uh, ha have absolutely no idea what they were watching. They, anybody that turned on their television set after getting breaking news across their phone that Donald Trump's campaign rally had been canceled out of fear of violence actually walked, just like me, walked right into the trap, walked right into what Donald Trump wanted him to walk into, and that was a made-for-TV protest. They obviously set up, as, as Bill Daly said, they knew exactly what they were doing when they set the, the, the rally up at the, at the college where they set it up, a college that was 25 percent uh, 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 Hispanic, 25 percent Asian, 8 percent black. It was in a town that had not elected a Republican mayor since 1931. Uh, and Donald Trump knew exactly what was going on. They allowed protesters to stream in, uh, so much so 
that they had an excuse to cancel the event. And when they canceled the event, well, Donald Trump got to go on all the networks for the next three to four hours and complain about how his First Amendment rights had been violated, despite the fact he was getting far more uh, airplay than he would have ever gotten from that one speech. I think it shows once again how well Donald Trump knows, how cynically Donald Trump knows how to play the media. Uh, and so does it help? Does it hurt? It helps him tonight. It hurts him in the long run. Almost everything that Donald Trump has done over the last three weeks helps him in the short run uh, because he's being a political day trader, but hurts him in the fall election. That's the reason why you're seeing a general election matchups between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump start to show separation. Now, we've got a long way to go. If Donald Trump locks down the nomination and, again, stops the political day trading, stops playing to the lowest common denominator, you'll see those numbers start to tighten up. But he's got a ways to go because for, for every angry, disaffected voter that he picks up with events like Chicago, he loses three or four more moderate Republican voters in the suburbs, yeah. and the numbers just don't add up for Joe, him. Joe, on the Democratic side, is there anything Hillary Clinton and her team could do to end this contest before June, or should she just resign herself to running contested races against Bernie Sanders through California? I think she resigns herself to running contested races against Bernie Sanders going into California, but Democrats should actually rejoice over that. It makes Hillary Clinton a better candidate. We all saw what a terrible candidate she was six months ago, four months ago, when she didn't think she was going to get a challenge uh, from Bernie Sanders. But Bernie Sanders pushing Hillary Clinton has made Hillary Clinton a much better candidate this year than she was at the beginning. Just like Barack Obama made her a much better candidate in 2008. The difference, of course, being this time, it looks like numerically Hillary Clinton can squeak it out in the end. But no, I think this one's going to go much longer than the Republican contest.